In this video, we're going to show you the basics of the profile toolpath. The profile toolpath will cut around or along vectors and is commonly used to cut parts out. So to access the profile toolpath, you need to open up your toolpath tab on the right hand side and in the toolpath operations, go on the first icon, which is the profile toolpath. And when you click on that, that will open up the profile toolpath form. So the profile toolpath requires a vector or vectors that we use to create the profile toolpath with. In this case, I just want to cut out this very basic square. So I'm going to select it. You can see it's selected there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work our way down the form to assign all sorts of settings to cut this square out. So we're going to start at the top and we're going to look at the cutting depths. And this is where we tell the toolpath where we want to start and ultimately how far down we want to cut into our material. So with the start depth, so this is where we tell the tool where we want it to start in C. Now we've got a start depth here of zero. Now you'll never need to alter this if you're cutting from the material surface. But if you are cutting into a pocket where the material has already been machined away, then you need to specify the start depth of how far into the material you want your toolpath to start from. So in this case, we're actually going to leave this at zero on the material surface. And next we need to specify the cut depth. So this is how much we want to cut into our material. Now I want to cut our square out all the way through our material. Now my material thickness is half an inch. So I can leave half an inch in there. However, a handy little tool, if you couldn't remember what you'd set your material uh, thickness to, you could just type in Z followed by the equals key and then the software will input your material thickness that you've set in the software in this field here, which is really handy. So next up, we need to specify a tool that we're going to use to cut this out. So we can use this select option here to open up our tool database. And that will give us a list of all the tools based on the materials and the machines that you are using. Now in this case, we're going to go with a quarter of an inch end mill and we can see all of the settings, the parameters and feed and speeds that have been assigned to this tool within our tool database. So we're just going to go ahead and select that there. Now we also have this edit option here. And this is handy as it allows me to edit settings for this particular toolpath. And so we don't overwrite the default settings that are stored in the tool information within the tool database. And if we created further profile toolpaths within this same session, then it will remember any edit information that we give this specific tool. And so it's always good practice just to check over the tool information using this edit option to ensure that the settings are safe for this particular toolpath. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at altering the pass step. So the pass step is the number of passes that the tool takes to go down in terms of Z. So in this case, I'm actually going to alter that to an eighth of an inch in there, and we're going to go ahead and press OK. And so what that means, it's going to go down in eighth inch steps and cut one part out, then it's going to go down again and a further eighth of an inch, and so on until it reaches the final half inch cut depth. Next up, we have the option to choose how we machine those vectors, whether that's on the outside or right, inside or left or actually on those vectors and you can see this handy graphic is really showing you what that actually means and what that looks like now as we want to cut the square out I actually want to machine on the outside of this vector then we have the direction where we've got climb or conventional now this is really all down to the way that the cutting teeth on the tool engage with the material and the way that the chips are removed and deposited. And there is plenty of discussions on this of which is best to use as one may give a better finish than the other. But the best advice that I can give you is to run test cuts on your material first. And if you find that the finish looks better on the waste material on the parts that you're cutting out, then simply switch the direction to the other option. Now in this case, we're just going to go with climb here. 
Now at the bottom here, we have the option to name our toolpath. I'm just gonna leave that as the default profile one. And then when you're happy, you can then go ahead and press calculate and the software will calculate that for you. So here we're presented with a preview of what our toolpath looks like. And so what's happening here, so this is our X0, Y0 position. And this red line represents the uh, tool travel to get to the start point, which is going to be over here. And then if we just twiddle our view to the front view, we can see this a little better. And so you can see we've got this line here. So this is the plunge. And what's happening is it's going to plunge down to our first pass depth, which was an eighth of an inch. And then what's going to happen is it's going to go around and cut that square. Once it gets back to that start point, it's going to go down another eighth of an inch and then go around until it gets back to the start point and so on. Okay, so let's just tilt that view. Now, if you wanted to actually reduce the number of pass steps that you've got in your toolpath, then you can do that by editing the toolpath. So let's just go back into the profile toolpath by double clicking on the toolpath there. And then we're going to go over to the edit option here. And so here we're actually going to change this to a quarter of an inch. And you do this all assuming that it's safe to do so. Okay, so changing the pass step there to a quarter of an inch, and we could go ahead and press OK. This would be a good spot actually to show you if we go back into the main tool database where we use the select option, we can see that the pass step here is still set to the 0 0.075, and it hasn't been interfered with what we've been doing with the edit option. So let's just close out there. Okay, so now we can go ahead and calculate that. And you'll see now that's removed two of those passes. And so what's happening now is it's going to travel over and it's going to cut into its first quarter of an inch depth, travel around and feed into the material to go and cut the first pass of the square. Once it gets back to the start point, it's going to go down another quarter of an inch and then travel around. So let's just take a look at that in terms of the actual preview. So we're just gonna put this over here and then we'll just slow our preview down a little and then we can preview that. So you can see there's our first quarter and there is the full half inch cut and there is your square. And if you wanted to delete any waste material, you can simply double click on that waste so you can clear anything away so you've got a good representation of what your part will look like. So let's just reset that preview. I'm just going to close out the preview toolpath form. We're just going to jump back into our profile toolpath. So the next option that we have in the form is to add ramp plunge moves. And so what this will do is rather than plunge the tool directly down the Z axis into the tool's first pass depth, which can be quite strenuous on the tool, the ramping option will allow the tool to ramp into the material, which means that it will cut down to the specified pass step in a zigzag motion at a distance that we specify in this area here. And so ultimately it adds a horizontal element to the movement, which ultimately improves the wear and tear of the tool and enables for faster plunge rates. So let's check the option to apply a ramp plunge move. And here we're going to set the um, ramp to be one inch. And then we'll go ahead and press calculate. Okay, so let's just twiddle our view and we'll just set that to the left because we can see that a lot clearer here. And so let's just take a moment to just have a look at what's going on. Okay, so we're plunging down, right? And we've got our first plunge move. Okay, so it's going in and across one inch, so this is one inch here, and at this point, that is an eighth of an inch. And then in order for it to complete the first pass depth, it's going to go back on itself one inch, whilst also cutting down to the other eighth of an inch deep until it meets its first quarter of an inch pass depth, and then it's going to go round, and then when it gets to the start depth again, it's going to go over one inch, 
until it gets to the first eighth of an inch and then once it's done that we're going to go back on ourselves one inch for and go further down another eighth of an inch until we get that total quarter of an inch past depth and then it will continue to go around and cut that part out so you can see that horizontal zigzag motion that we've got there so let's just take a look and we'll just actually preview that. So we'll set that to the top and then we'll just pop that in this sort of view here. And um, again, we're just going to reduce the speed of our toolpath preview. Then we're going to preview that. So you can see that ramp and you've seen how it went back on itself. It's going to go out, back. Once it gets back round, it's going to go back on itself and then it's going to cut our part out. And there we have our finished part. Now, if we didn't have a vacuum hold down system in place on our machine, then this square is more than likely going to fly out of place on the last pass because there's nothing to actually hold it still. So if we didn't have a vacuum hold down, then what we could do is we could look at using the option to add tabs to our toolpath. Now tabs are small strips of material that hold the parts to the material that we're cutting out from. And so you'd then manually remove those tabs using a chisel and hammer or a saw to break the part away from the material block where you'd then apply some hand finishing to remove any evidence of a tab being there in the first place. So let's just go ahead and just reset this preview. Then we're just gonna jump back into our profile toolpath. So in the form, let's just check this option here to add tabs to our toolpath. And then this is where we can specify the length and the thickness of our tabs. So here we could put in a length here, let's say half an inch. And then the thickness, you could put an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch whatever it is that you want that to be you can just apply that value in here in this case we're just going to leave that at an eighth of an inch then we're going to use this option here to edit tabs okay so what we can do is we can just press f just to fit that to our screen and here what's happened is it's opened up the 2d view and this is where we need to place our tabs now we can have the software automatically create tabs for us so we'll have a look at that first so first you can set a constant number so for example we could say i want you to create four tabs and then we can use the add tabs option and you can see that they've been added here like so if you wanted to reduce that again just use that drop down or you can type a value in if you wanted to this case let's just go with four again and press add tabs alternatively you have the option here to apply a constant distance between the tabs whereby you can specify a distance between each one of those tabs so let's go with one where we want a minimum of two tabs and let's say a maximum of eight tabs and then again press add tabs and it will apply that there uh, ensuring that there is a one inch distance between the two and you can see we've got one two three four five six seven eight we have the option to position the placement here so you can use the option to avoid corners and curved regions which is really handy if you do not want tabs on corners it's quite an impractical place to have them uh, along with curved regions as well as that can be quite hard to remove especially on internal curved regions um, you can also choose the option to have the first tab at the machine and start point so if we checked that option there and then press add tabs it will apply that to the start point again corners aren't really ideal placement in order to have your tabs okay so i'm going to use this option here to avoid corners and curved regions i'm going to go with a constant number i'm going to go ahead and press add tabs alternatively if you didn't want to work from the form you can manually do all of this yourself whereby you can click to add a tab you can see where I've got a check there and it's applying that for me if I wanted to remove a tab I can simply click on the tabs to remove them if I wanted to move a tab I can hover over it and then move it into position and then again to delete just click on that to remove that tab okay so I'm happy with the position of the tabs here so we can close out and then we can continue to calculate this toolpath and take a look at the effect of our part with tabs in place so then we'll go ahead and press calculate so let's just twiddle our view okay so you can see we've got once we've done our first pass and we get to our second pass you can see where the tool is retracting 
and then plunging back that's your tab that you can see there and it does it the same here and they're all in the positions that we set earlier so let's just go ahead and preview that to see what that looks like we'll just speed that up a little bit okay so there's your first tab and your last tab there okay so it's set my uh fill area to global color it must have been the last setting that we used so we're just going to switch that back to the material color and you can see those tabs are in place and that's been safely held together to our material because of those tabs and then what we'd do is we'd just manually remove those by hand and then clean them up so if you wanted to edit your tabs you can always go back in and reduce the thickness of them increase them increase the length or decrease the length to whatever is appropriate for your particular project. Okay then, so now we're going to look at another example. So let's just uh, reset our preview and we're just going to close out here. So now let's take a look at an example where we're going to have vectors inside of vectors that we want to profile. So we're just going to switch over to our design tab. And then over here, we're just going to draw some more shapes. So for example, let's just draw a circle here. Then we'll just draw a rectangle and then we'll just draw that in here. And then we'll draw another rectangle on the outside. And then we'll close out. And then we're just going to take all of those and we're just going to press F9 just to center them. And then we're going to switch back over to our toolpath tab. And what we're going to do is we're just going to tile our windows so you can see both the 2D and the 3D view. We're going to go into the profile toolpath. We're just going to go with the exact same basic settings that we did earlier. And then we're going to machine on the outside of our vectors and we'll just see what happens here. So we're going to press calculate. Okay, so you can see our 3D view here. But if we take a look over in our 2D view, you can see that we're presented with the wireframe drawing of our toolpath that shows the direction. Uh, of travel around our parts and we can see that on the larger square here we're machining on the outside of that square and then on this rectangle here we're also machining on the outside of this rectangle here but then when we go to the shapes inside of the square you can see that the circle here we're actually machining on the inside of the circle and on the rectangle that's within the square again we're also machining on the inside of that rectangle and so what the software has done is if it finds any vectors on the inside of a selection of vectors then the software will know that it needs to machine the vectors on the outside using the tool on the outside of those vectors and then the vectors that are inside of that selection the software automatically knows to actually machine those on the inside of those vectors and this is exactly what we want here. Now here we've just seen the wireframe view in the 2D view, but you can also toggle that to switch to a solid view, which if you click on that, and we're able to see the exact uh, path that our tool's going to take at the thickness there, which can be handy in some cases. And so that's the basics of the profile toolpath.